literally said to me, like, you're really smart, like you can do the work, but you just, you hate it here and you're not meant to be here. Find something else. We know there's something you'll like, but it's not this. One of my friends like told me the other day, she's like, you should just make a full on rap song where the whole song is rapping. And I'm like, you know, that's not such a bad idea. I loved performing at Soho House event in New York for NFT week. That was like right after I got in the Lizzo placement. Everyone's like really hype about that. She's a popular social media influencer and Emmy Award winning pop star. Her new dark pop single Clown Tears is gaining virality on TikTok and she just signed her first music publishing deal. Please welcome Anna Storm to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on. How are you doing today? I'm great as well. So thank you so much for coming on, sharing a little bit about you and your music and everything like that. Yeah, of course. So the first question I usually ask artists who come on is just, what was your first experience with music like or what made you want to start a career in music? Yeah, so my first experience with music was um, growing up, um, I would take my mom's Mariah Carey CDs and I would like listen to them and I'd be like, how does she do that with her voice? Like all the vocal runs and I would kind of try to like mimic her and just listen to the CDs and like start kind of teaching myself how to sing through, um, you know, listening to those CDs and, and just, uh, I was like, I really want to do this. This is so much fun. Like, it's so amazing. It's like vocal acrobats. And then um, when I was 11, I wrote my first song called Morning Dove, and I decided to perform it in the school talent show. And I just loved being on stage and it just felt so natural to me. And so it was always like something growing up that I really wanted to pursue and like looking at all the pop stars um, at the time, like on MTV and like TRL and stuff, I was like, oh, I really want to do that. It seems so like amazing. And I just feel like that's my calling. And um, I didn't end up really pursuing it until um, like three or four years ago. But um, then I released my first single, Confident. And I worked on a couple more singles and I, I'm really happy that I'm able like to pursue it now. That's a great story. And you mentioned like not like taking a while before actually pursuing it. What were you doing in that time? What was your work? Did you have any other like aspirations, things like that? I grew up in like a really um, traditional, um, just like preppy, like very homogenous town in Connecticut. And I really didn't like fit in there. I was always kind of like an outcast because I was like super creative and eccentric and I just didn't have a lot of friends and I was bullied a lot. And um, I really excelled in academia and whatnot. And, you know, I went to college because that was like expected of me. And then I actually had um, a couple of jobs post-graduating and I ended up getting fired from most of them. And um, not because I wasn't like intelligent enough to have the job, but they literally said to me like, you're really smart, like you can do the work, but you just, you hate it here and you're not meant to be here and you find something else like that. Is, we know there's something you'll like, but it's not this. And I kind of thought to myself like, well, maybe this is really my time. Like I had moved to the West Coast from the East Coast and I was finally kind of like on my own and I didn't need to like listen to my parents because they're all the way across the country. And so I um, ended up meeting a popular music producer through a friend of mine in the fitness industry. And we just started working on a couple of songs and kind of like developing my brand and on uh, building my social media presence and whatnot. So I'm um, really glad that I got to not like be in that like cubicle office nine to five type of vibes because it just like, it was very, it just wasn't for me. It didn't feel right. Yeah. It didn't feel right. So I'm glad I got fired. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's it's great that like you sort of took that as an opportunity to start pursuing music or find something you're passionate about rather than just like get down about it or uh, sort of take it as like a loss or a negative thing. Um, oh, thank you. And, and so you, you mentioned like a few years ago, you finally decide, all right, I'm going to like get into music. I'm going to start really going for this. If there are other like, young artists listening to this who like are now starting to feel that like hey I want to get into it 
what tips or advice would you give to those artists? Yeah, so tips I would give to young artists that like think that they might want to get into music is be um you have to be like very persistent like it's not an overnight thing like a lot of times an artist that you think blew up overnight they were really grinding like 10 years before they really you know blew up and you don't see all that grinding and that the hard work that they have to put in you just see the results and you see the results and it's like oh it's so glamorous and stuff but it just doesn't happen like that you have to be it's possible to be successful in entertainment. Don't get me wrong, but you do have to be consistent and there are going to be hard days and there's going to be days that it seems like everyone's doubting you and you just have to believe in yourself and be consistent and grind and um, never like limit your own creativity and just don't ever doubt yourself because a lot of the world's going to do that. So you have to be your like number one biggest fan. Totally. I think, I think that's great advice that, I mean, it you hear it all around people start to sort of take it as cliche and things like that but all these successful people are saying that for a reason because they had that same experience and believed in themselves and they're where they are now are you a music artist trying to find a way to get your music on as many streaming platforms as possible then check out distro kit DistroKid is a super user-friendly and super easy-to-use service that will make your music available in stores like Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon Music, YouTube, Snapchat, everything. Everything you could imagine, it's available. People will even be able to add your songs into their Instagram stories. DistroKid helps you with the distribution, monetization, and promotion of all of your music. Use the link in the description of this video for 7% off any DistroKid package you want. Pick from musician packages designed to help artists get their own music out there, or even get a label package where you can manage up to 100 artists from one profile. So that's more for like managers, labels, and you can also get the musician package that I mentioned earlier, which is more for artists, producers, things like that. It's super easy, and you can get 7% off any package right now with the link in the description of this video. So once again, if you're looking for a way to get your music on as many streaming platforms as possible, I'm talking any platform you can think of, get DistroKid and get 7% off right now with the link in the description back to the program i mentioned it in the intro but you recently just signed a music publishing deal congratulations on that but what Thank can you, you tell us if anything about that and what are you looking yeah. forward to get out of this yeah of course so i i signed a deal um with a company called kilphonic rights and i'm really like excited about being with them i signed it like maybe like two or three weeks ago and i've just kind of been like getting acclimated with like my whole team and like the head of A&R right now, but it really was based upon, um, cause two of my songs, Confident and Versace Shade are both featured on Lizzo's reality show, Watch Out for the Big Girls. And then Confident is now featured on the Real Housewives of Dubai. So based upon um, my like newest sync placements, they were interested in taking me on and offering me a deal. And they have like a whole, team that you know has really good relationships with music directors so they even said they're going to get a ton of more uh sync placements for confident and they're definitely they said going to get some for clown tears my newest single so i'm really hoping to get more sync placements more exposure um and definitely just like maximize my royalties and exposure you know i would like to eventually only if the deal is good though get a record deal so the, it's just kind of a stepping stone to that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah working your way up and i want to yeah. dive into like your music that we're now talking about first of all sync placements like you mentioned real housewives of dubai lizzo's show what sort of is it like for you to see your song sort of take on a role in this like different format or different media and be used in like global tv it honestly okay so like the first time that I, um i found out that confident my first single was being used in lizzo's show like i found out through instagram and i was like and they they used a good chunk of it they used like a minute and a half which usually the sync placement isn't like that long but they used a lot of it and i was like holy shit this is like 
Lizzo's show, like, and then the show ended up being like way bigger than we ever would have expected because ended up winning three Emmys, ended up winning a Critics Choice Award. Like it was humongous. And it was the number one stream show on Amazon Prime. And I'm like, I didn't know that I, my first sync placement would be like an Emmy Award winning thing. You know, like no one yeah. really knows. Yeah, that. on a major platform's like biggest show. That's incredible that, you know, you've sort of found this quick success with that and the other song you mentioned clown tears like your new single just what can you tell us about that either the song itself or just like the story behind what went into it clown tears really i i wrote that about you know an ex boyfriend that i had um like a toxic relationship i just got mad really one day and i never thought i could like write like that it's kind of like more like dark pop like sort of a little bit Billie Eilish, but like a mix of artists. Um, but I never thought I could go in that uh, direction because my other stuff was like so much more like upbeat and stuff. Um, and I just got so pissed off one day. So I wrote that song and I really ended up liking it like a lot. And um, I realized I wanted to put something out like recently. Um, and so I was like, oh, it's it's fall you know it's gonna be halloween maybe i can just like put this out like go in the studio record this because it was just in demo form before and then i wanted to do a video um so i kind of like came up with the aesthetic for the video and picked where i was gonna um film it like the set design and um then i you know i ended up kind of like putting it together pretty quickly and um i really love like the finished product i'm really happy about it. a lot of people like really connect with the song because everyone's kind of had like a toxic relationship before and there's been like you know people making dances on tiktok which i've really enjoyed and um it's so funny i like literally saw this one tiktok and i think she posted on ig reels too like this woman looked like she was i mean this is not i, I would love like everyone to listen to my music but honestly i just feel like my fan base more like gen z like millennials obviously and this woman knew all the words to the song to Clown Tears, and she literally looked like she was 70. And I was like, I did not think I wasn't going for like the, you know, and I didn't think that like it would appeal to like other yeah. demographics, you know? But it's yeah, pretty yeah. cool to see that, you know? Um, and it's cool to see a lot of people like relating to the lyrics and just vibing with it it's really rewarding as an artist yeah no it's great always to have like a wide appeal to different like demographics because then you can get like people who maybe otherwise wouldn't really meet each other or, like get along can connect over your music and what you put out um and so when with your music career like Anna Storm is that your real name or is that just like a stage that's name? That's my stage name. Up? Yeah. That's and so Anna how, how did you sister. come up with Anna Storm or like what's the origin behind that? So this is kind of funny. Um, It's so random. I was like at the mall um, and this is before I even like pursued music. It was, I was at the mall maybe like 10 years ago and you know like how sometimes it doesn't happen as much anymore but like rappers would like push, push their mixtapes and stuff and solicit mm -hmm. you like at the mall. So there's this one rapper who did that to me at the local mall and we just talked like a little bit and then he was like, you know, if you were an artist, your name should be Anna Storm. And I'm like, wow, that sounds really good. And it just stuck with me. Like, I have no clue who the rapper is. Like, I don't even think I bought his mixtape, but like he gave me my name and it just kind of clicked and I'm like, Storm, kind of like alpha, female, powerful, just like boss, you know, just, just cool. It just, it resonated with me and like the message that I was, you know, I would ultimately go for in my music. Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're that rapper that was pushing mixtapes at the mall and gave Anna Storm her name, I mean, thank you from both probably Anna Storm and myself. It's a great name and it clearly stuck. Um, once you, ha have you like performed live at all yeah like had any shows or anything yeah so i um i've been performing a lot um in san diego like mm -hmm. usually like once a week i perform like near the beach in pacific beach um i've performed like in new york city at soho house in new york um 
I, you know, I've performed like in LA. I plan to really like expand my performing this year. Um, I'm going to be releasing my first album and definitely um, I plan to be performing more, hopefully a tour. So That'd be great. And what, if you can say anything, what can we sort of expect or look forward to from this album? Yeah, so this album, you know, it's going to have some of the songs I've already released, but like a lot of new songs too. And it's a lot of bops, like a lot of like really fun, upbeat party songs. There are a couple features on the album. I will say that one of them uh, is like, it's probably my favorite song that I have ever written. And it features um, the rapper Petey Pablo. He had the song like Freak Leak and Goodies with Ciara and stuff. So he's on the song and he goes really hard. And then I also um, have another feature with... Um, Mims, who had this song, This Is Why I'm Hot, the rap song, I think it was probably in like 2007, but yeah, I'm really, uh, I'm really excited, like, it's it just like a lot of like upbeat, like kind of hip hop vibes, but um, also some like EDM, and, and then there's like some easy listening, like chill Jack Johnson vibes too, like it's really, everything's like pretty upbeat, but it's like just different, um, it's not all like the same, even though it's all kind of pop, but some of it has more hip hop influence, some more chill. So it's it's good. It's going to be good for summer. I'll tell you that. Awesome. Hey, if you're like me and you're interested in the YouTube or creator space, you should check out The Publish Press. The Publish Press is a completely free newsletter founded by YouTubers Colin and Samir. They host their own podcast talking to some of YouTube's largest creators. They've edited some of the best content I've seen on YouTube, and now they're sharing their knowledge about the YouTube space with you for free. The published press comes out three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with everything going on with your favorite creators and platforms. And like I said, it's completely free. Just enter your email address to receive the published press whenever it comes out, and that's it. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below, sign up to the Publish Press and get all the info you need on the industry. We've sort of talked about like your success with your career and how, how you've, you know, sort of blown up super early in your career. Was there any sort of pitfalls or down moments towards the start of it that really made you question the decision? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, when I first started, it's, it's different like hearing about the entertainment industry and seeing like your favorite um, artists, like, but then actually knowing all the work that goes into it. Like, you're like, oh, this is really what it is. This is all the grinding it takes. Like, this is, I have to be posting on social media. I have to like kind of be cringe sometimes just to get people's like attention and get and entertain people. And it's like, and then, you know, at the beginning, I, I would get like so much hate, like, I still get hate, but now I just laugh at it. And a lot of times if it's, if it's an interesting enough comment, I will clap back and it's like a million times. And it actually makes the comment, like if I clap back, it will be like in a video comment and it like actually does really well. Like it actually just does well for me, like to be honest. And a lot of people like clap back comments, but like at the beginning, I didn't know how to take it. Like I would get people just saying so much nasty shit. And then I, I noticed too, like, even people I thought were my friends, like they weren't that supportive of me at the beginning, like before I like achieved any sort of success, they would never like share my shit. Like sometimes they wouldn't like my shit, but then they'd be like so quick to share like, you know, someone like Billie Eilish's shit that like will never know they exist and probably doesn't give a fuck about them, but like they would never share my shit. And it's kind of got annoying like it felt like you know like at the beginning like a lot of people were doubting me and now like you know once my stuff like got some placements then they're like oh we are and now you could do it it's yeah just, so like, fake, a, a lot of know? like friends that seem very dependent on like how the music's doing or how your career is going and it's great that you found a way to turn these negative comments or this negativity around you and like turn it into something positive you sort of don't let it get you down. You're like, no, I'm a, I'm like above this. I can fight this, fight back against this. Um, so it's really great that you, you know, you can transform energy in that way. Um, is there just any one person, whether personally or just like another artist, 
that has inspired you with your music? Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a lot of artists that have inspired me. Definitely, obviously, Mariah Carey and listening to her stuff. Um, growing up, uh, then, you know, like people like Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, just like love their artistry and love Britney Spears' performance, love Christina Aguilera's voice, just love their edginess. Um, I love hip hop. That's like my number one favorite genre of music. And I definitely try to add some of it to my music, even though they're pop songs, but I try to rap in some of the stuff I put out. Um, and it's been a big influence on me. So like some rappers I really like, um, Pusha T, I love Lil Uzi Vert, Future, uh, Playboy Cardi, 21 Savage, um, Lil Wayne, you know, like anything like 2000s to now I like some of the 90s stuff yeah. I like it but it's just like a little bit too old sounding but um yeah that's uh, a lot of the the I guess more modern hip-hop I like yeah definitely yeah. and it's do you think you like you said you have aspects of hip-hop in your music already but do you ever see yourself like getting even more into hip-hop or maybe trying a few rap songs you know it's interesting you said that because one of my friends like told me Anna like the other day she's like you should just make a full-on rap song where the whole song you're rapping and I'm like you know that's not such a bad idea like I listen to enough rap that I you know like I can I could rap I'm not like I'm never gonna say I'm the best rapper but I could I think I could do a full rap song you know I listen to enough of it that I don't know why I wouldn't be able to do a full rap song my, it's a little bit more breath control than singing. It's definitely harder than singing, yeah. but I think I could do it. I kind of started to write one and I just came up with like the first verse and the hook and I'm going to try to continue to write it because I, I think I, I think I should come out with a full rap song. Yeah, I think that'd be a really cool like blend of sounds to like, I mean, I listened to some of your pop stuff, really enjoyed it. Like it's great. And I think just having different sounds or being able to like, step into different genres is a really cool thing for an artist uh to be able to do and so thank you whether it's rap or otherwise like maybe one of your current pop songs what does your creative process look like for coming up with these songs yes yeah, so for me i have to um i i don't play any instruments or anything i don't produce beats but i always have to start with an instrumental that you know clown tears i i bought it from a producer named Pacific Beats, but some of my other stuff was produced by um, Josh Stevens. And I'll, so I'll get the the instrumental first. And then I start coming up with a melody, like as a voice note on my phone. So I have the melody first, um, just go through kind of like vibe with the instrumental. And then I start writing lyrics to it. And so it's always like for me, instrumental melody and then lyrics. And um, I usually I know if something's going to be good, if it comes and if, if it flows if I'm like struggling too much with a song then I just probably don't think it's going to be that good and there's no point to like waste all this time on it but mm -hmm. I might if there's like parts of it that I like once I recorded it as a demo I might use it in another song you know you you yeah. keep it in sort of the back of your mind you make note of it that like hey it's not being used here but I could always come back to this really yeah. flush it out into like its own idea and turn it into something else and yeah when you're when you're making music like I mean you you mentioned having hip-hop influence we've talked about Billie Eilish a little bit do you take inspiration from like other artists and if you do how do you sort of balance that with your own sound yeah so basically I feel like when I'm starting to like write something and even when I'm like first coming up with a melody like I'll think oh this Sometimes, like, I'll think, oh, this kind of has this kind of vibe. Like, it kind of sounds like it could be this artist, but then, like, maybe the lyrics that I'm writing are more specific. Like, they're more of my spin on the theme, you know? Um, like, I know in, like, some of my songs, which, like, my motto is, like, slay life, like, I'll say, like, slay or, you know, just yeah. say some stuff that's, like, Anna Storm specific. So even if I think something sounds like someone... Like, I think some of my stuff, like my song, like Red Bottoms and Sandy Beaches kind of sounds like Kesha. It has Kesha vibes, but like there's lines that are, like only I would say, you know, 
but I can I can see how they're I do draw and in, like inspiration from other artists and a lot of artists do like it's hard not to you know all art like comes from somewhere definitely and you I mean mentioned some of the sync placements you've got and then like that helping out your career but have you put out any song that really defied your expectations like really when like performed better than you thought it would I well I, when I put out my first single I would I would have to just go back to my first single confident right now because you know it was like my first single so I'm like oh I don't really you know it's like my first try like I I thought it was good and catchy but I'm like it's my first try so it's probably like just gonna be a good thing to have and then you know it ended up getting the Lizzo placement it ended up getting the um Real Housewives of Dubai and then also it's like I, I on TikTok, it the content associated with it has over 10 million views on TikTok and it got that in like a month. So um that's kind of like despite my expectations because I'm like, wow, like I actually like with my first song, you know, which I thought it was kind of more just like maybe of a learning curve, like it's uh you know proving to do pretty well. And I, I hope it continues to grow. I mean, I hope it becomes like because nowadays things can, you know, they don't become a hit like right away a lot especially because of things like TikTok things yeah. can become a hit like five years later so I hope it becomes a hit and I think it has a chance at it I mean you have to go in with that mentality you have to think your your shit's amazing yeah and I think you did a great job like sort of capitalizing on like how much people like uh confident because like you have you made a remix to it you have like the unplugged version of it like you clearly are embracing like that song and you're trying to like show listeners what it could be like in all these different forms and so I think it's it's great that you like a lot of artists can sort of look down on TikTok or like look for actual I don't know concert goers or like Spotify listeners rather than something getting big on TikTok and sort of use that as a way to discredit it. But it's great that you're sort of taking it in as a positive thing and really seeing people enjoy your song and your lyrics. Thank you. Thank you. And so what, I mean, of the songs you've released so far, do you think there's one that really shows like what Anna Storm sounds like or like what your unique style is? You know, I just feel like that's hard because I feel like I feel like my style like my artistic style could be like like a lot of things like I could be very versatile I feel like there's actually stuff on my new upcoming album that does there's actually one song that does encapsulate it but I don't want to like say too much about it yeah no but there's problem. one song that I think is like very me and mm -hmm. people are gonna love it it's, it's awesome but um as far as stuff that's already out like nothing is like a hundred I mean it all is me but there's not like one defining song I would say yeah yeah you're it's hard to especially for an artist like you said who's versatile to like put their sound or all the things they can do into one song you sort of need the collection or the body of work to like be like okay this is clearly where she took her hip-hop influence this is like where her songwriting really shines and so it's it's good that you can sort of spread out your sound across multiple songs and projects rather than just like have one song um that you can point to and now now that you're really pursuing music you seem to be like on a upwards tra trajectory in your career what level do you want to reach with your music? You know, I really want to, um, and I have some opportunities that are, uh, I, mean, I don't want to talk about them because they're not like definite, but yeah. um, 2024 kind of opportunities that kind of go along with the new album that are going to really um, catapult me into like a new area into my career. And I eventually, um, you know, and this is only if like the deal is is good, but I hope that I would be in a position with good leverage to be able to get like a good deal. I would I would love to like have a record deal, you know, and just yeah. be able to 
I, you don't need one nowadays, but I, I kind of would like one if it's good, if I have, you know, the leverage to be able to have it. Yeah. yeah, no, it's definitely good to like have, have one, have goals and two, have an idea of what you're looking for. So you mentioned like make it a good one. What are you looking for in these record deals or what, or like your ideal record deal? Something where, you know, like, they would definitely like want to push me as their artist. Like, you know, you hear about like deals where the artists kind of like their projects get shelved like in favor of other people on the roster. And they're just, you know, they're kind of like a prisoner to the label because they didn't, they got a shitty deal or they didn't have that much leverage or whatever. So I would want something where people are like, I have an active team of people like behind me, like giving me like artist development and just like helping me with my songwriting and, and just being there to support me and like, you know, capitalizing off of, of everything. So just so, a, a team of people that are supportive and know like what the fuck they're doing and stuff. Yeah. Very helpful. Yeah, definitely. And like a label that is looking to support you and is proud of like, you know, hey, one of our artists, Anna Storm, like is very much so on our label, not like a secondary artists that they'll like put out when none of their like headliners and, like have yeah. you know things ready to come out yeah i think that's definitely important i i had um another artist on here logan lynn i don't know if you've heard of him but he he was sort of talking about like he's had a couple record deals um and most of them were pretty bad and you didn't really like have feel like they were supporting him and then on his current one it really like shifted his idea of what a record deal could be because they're so supportive and really helping him out. And he he was like, it's definitely important to find a label that allocates to like what you're interested in. Like if you want, if if he he was bringing up for him, like he's a big music video guy and this label was like ready to give him like music video budgets and things like that. Mm. And so great to have a label that really believes in you and if is like all right if you know Anna Storm if you believe in this we we do too we're gonna you know give you what resources we can that can uh, sort of help you help you get it to a finished product yeah definitely and so if you got a chance to sort of like collaborate with any artist or band in the world who do you think you would want to collaborate with I would I mean I would love to collaborate with someone like um like Doja Cat I love her artist her history because she has like the hip-hop but then she sings and she's very versatile and I feel like has experimented with like different genres and all her songs are really catchy and hooky and so that would be awesome to like collaborate with her I just feel like she has so much like artistic genius it would be awesome um other artists I mean there's probably a ton <laughs> I'm yeah, just gonna listen to her though, because like the, the yeah, listen. she's she's great. I mean, I've listened to a couple of her latest album, and then um, Planet Her, I listened to as well. And I think it it's similar to you in a way where like she started off or got popular with like this pop sound sort of things like that. You know, having a following on TikTok, and then now is embracing sort of her hip hop influences and is doing yeah. all kinds of sounds but definitely has like outwardly rap songs that she's just rapping the entire way through and I think it's really great that she's trying out like you said all these different sounds and so because I'm sure I'm sure there's more than just Doja Cat that you enjoy or that you listen to who oh, are there's... some of your like favorite artists just to listen to on like a daily basis my favorite artist to listen to on a daily basis Lil Uzi Vert Future yeah. uh Playboy Cardi um I've been listening to like Tate McCree's new album for sure um I listen to Dua Lipa a lot I listen to um like Pusha T, 21 Savage um yeah I mean yeah. it's a lot of people yeah, yeah yeah that's great and I mean it's been out a few months now but over this past summer i listened through uh the pink tape album by lil uzi for what what were your thoughts on that or like what do you think you do you have a favorite song from that album i don't know if i have like a favorite song um i think it's like a great album but i don't necessarily 
have a favorite yet on that album yeah, I feel no. like I might have not like because he has like a huge body of work and I oh, yeah. had only been out like a few months I I have listened to it I feel like I haven't like delved in Sat like deep enough yeah. to the newest release enough to have a favorite song um I've actually been listening to like a lot of him from like 2018 to be honest yeah yeah, yeah. And, I mean, like, he had a whole album with Future that I'm like obsessed with. Um, yeah, and I, I think that's probably perfect for you because you mentioned like liking both of them. So that's probably great for like two big artists that you really admire and listen to coming together for like in a, a whole collaborative project. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any like live show that you've done? that's your favorite do you have one memory from a live show that really sticks with you yeah um I loved performing at um so this like Soho house event in New York um for NFT week um it was just awesome because like the crowd energy was great like I'm from the east coast originally so it was like awesome to perform back where I'm from and just get that that New York East Coast energy and everyone was like so excited and it was just a, it's a great experience and it, that was like right after I'd gotten the Lizzo placement so like everyone was like really hype about that and um it was really like an exciting time awesome and going forward uh because it seems like you really enjoy performing live going forward do you have a like dream venue or a bucket list venue that you would really love to perform it yes um i would love to like start performing at music festivals and stuff like i would love to perform at like coachella or you know like bonnaroo or Lollapalooza. Yeah. you know that would be awesome or internationally like honestly it's so funny because like looking at um my spotify rap there were like there was like Denmark and some other country were before the United States so I feel like that'd be awesome to like you know perform internationally too yeah yeah I'm totally traveling. yeah and it, like I mean you see a bunch of artists do like international tours that go really well and sometimes better than like whatever better than the U from. better than the U.S. you know I feel like sometimes like other countries are like they like hype U.S. artists more because they're from the U.S. so they're yeah. like it's like a different you know it's like an outside yeah yeah, yeah and it, there I think it's definitely a big thing for artists what U.S. or otherwise to like really acknowledge or like show love to fans from other countries that may not you know usually get it like you see fans in smaller countries that big pop stars or rappers are like you know, every time I go there, I just feel so welcomed oh, by wow. them because like, you know, I have fans there just like anywhere else. But, you know, other artists may not want to like go out all the way to those smaller countries or feel like there's opportunity when actually it's just there's as There's actually big and just like as more dedicated fans there even. Yeah. Well, those are all the questions I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, anything you want to shout out promote like Clown Tears or this new album or yeah. anything like online where fans can find you feel free to talk about that for sure so um, definitely guys like stream my new single Clown Tears it was released on Halloween and uh, people are really liking it you can there's also a music video you can find it on YouTube you can um actually I'm really excited because there's a piece of content on Instagram, which you can follow me by the way, it's Anna Storm, but there's a piece of content using my song Clown Tears on Instagram that just got um a million views in five days and like twenty two thousand shares. Um so oh, I was really awesome. happy about that. So it's kind of like a viral moment for clown tears, you know. Um so yeah, definitely follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok at it's Anna Storm and then Facebook facebook.com slash Anna Storm Slay Life. And um, yeah, you can just Google me and find some cool shit and, you know, maybe send me a DM if you decide to follow me. I'll probably respond back. Like, I like talking to people. So yeah. Yeah, great. And I'll leave a link to some of that down below. Thank you again for coming on. And I'm really looking forward to this album next year. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on.